Ladies and gentlemen, it's the awesome cast. We're back this week. Uh, episode 86 from Mayhem Studios down here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, we got a, a, bit of, a bit of stuff to talk about this week. Some awesome stuff. It's, it's getting awesomer in Wait, politics, guys. Hold on. Hold on. Time out. Oh, what? What's up? Um, we, we spent a lot of time in the restaurant business. Yes. Which means we should probably skip this this episode. Why is that, Shaji? Because uh, to 86 something mm -hmm. is to remove it. Mm -hmm. So we should just go ahead to 87 and you put up a show title that says uh, uh, Awesome Cast episode has been 86th. Show title. There, that's taken care of. Chachi, Chachi says dot net. Chachi plays. Chachi plays let's, dot com. It's both there. It's both there. Let's worry about that one. IT pro and blogger and charity worker. There he is. Oh, wait, we got a secondary oh. shot there. There oh. you go. There's oh, the there's yeah. the sex sexy. shot right there. It is. There it is. Um, <laughs> yeah. But enough of that. Yeah. Enough of that. The sexy almost got you in trouble. It so did. let's just move on. Yeah. Uh, but hey, it's doing great. Yeah, we're at uh, $2,053. Yeah. So we are. 947 away from our goal of 3k and we're uh, less than two weeks away uh, we're actually two and a half weeks away i can't count my weeks you cannot no i can't so uh actually yeah yeah two and a half weeks um right. february 10th and and 11th mm -hmm. at tunesium it'll be overnight it'll be streamed live yeah the whole thing whole thing yes the whole thing whole thing whole if you go thing. to chachiplays.com there's a uh, last year's yeah, all 13 minutes of it. <laughs> all 24 hours and 13 minutes compressed. Yes. Fantastic. Sorg is amazing. And, of course, uh, Rob not able to join us tonight. Um, I don't, I'm not sure why. Why do you think that he's not here tonight, Shachi? Eskimos. Eskimos? Yeah. Good. They, yeah. they kidnapped him. I think it was some kind of weird Eskimo illness, yes. to be honest. Lumberjacks. So, or he got cancer from all the... Uh, Lumberjacks. From all, he got a tumor from all the monitors surrounding his head last week. That's true. So, yes. Yeah. So uh, I had the brilliant idea. Yeah, to, you, you get the credit for this one. To uh, to bring in Ryan Dab -O Tech. He's back again. Yes. Howdy, howdy. The recently unemployed IT pro. <laughs> <laughs> That is correct. Job All free right. is the way to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of a free agency. Although oh, my free agency uh, ends tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. So. so so is this a good time to discuss the so, the status of the IT professional industry these days? Wait, hold on. Hold on. Stop. Or, hold time on, out. On. Time out. Hmm. Your last day at your, your old employment was Friday. Correct. And instead of taking a week off. You go back on a Wednesday? Yeah, I'm not doing so well. I have to work. <laughs> Keeps me busy. You see, you see that stuff behind him. It has never been as dust free as it is now. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, I, I did give that some thought, and um, I was fortunate enough to actually take a week and a half off uh, over the Christmas holiday. So it's not like I haven't had time off in a while. So. Gotcha. Um, yeah, took a couple of days just to kind of, uh, relax, get a couple of things done, um, that I needed to before, you know, starting this new opportunity, which will be uh, really exciting. Excellent. Excellent. Nice. Uh, I'll be here. Now you'll be at Chachi Plays. That is correct. I believe I am yeah. 10 a.m. Yeah. We scheduled the slot. Nice. So nice. Well, there. Do you know what you're playing yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's a common thing. Nobody knows what to play. They're no just like, one, I just want to play something. No one knows You're what to play. You're going to start making decisions for people? I, I, I had to. Yeah. Um, fan of the show, uh, Miss Bossy No Pants. Mm -hmm. uh, she, <laughs> hers, her donation was actually kind of funny. Um, hers was kind of a gamble. Mm -hmm. like it, it was gambling for kids, mm -hmm. pretty much. Uh, she stated that if the Denver Broncos beat the Pittsburgh Steelers in the playoffs... She would donate a hundred dollars. Well, they did, and she did, and so she picked a, a late afternoon slot to learn how to play Mario. Mm -hmm. So she picked that one, um, but the rest of them, yeah, I've pretty much picked. So you're going to teach her how to play Mario? I guess. Nice. Yeah. Nice. But uh, uh there's a Tetris tournament which is new this year, mm -hmm. and I uh, I made trophies for it. They're quite awesome. Mm -hmm. With actual Tetris pieces on them. We need to repost those pictures. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So, but those will be coming. So, anyways, uh, yeah, like I said, awesome cast. We are here. Uh, if you want to contact us, find out more about us. We're at awesomecast.com. Touch or you please. can email us at contact at awesomecast.com. Or you can call us at 724-258-CAST. That's 724-252-2278. Nice. Thank you, Chachi. <laughs> and, you know, be sure to contact us like uh, uh, this fellow, Sonic Screwdriver. Almost said the wrong name there. Uh, for uh, he has a little bit about about SOPA. <clears throat> Greetings, awesome casters. How's the SOPA thing working now? Uh, I've read it's been tabled, but some some say that it's just a delay, and some say it's a death sentence for a fledging bill. Why can't, for a lack of more accurate nomenclature, the Hollywood wheels see that the key to anti privacy is ease of consumption and lower unit costs instead of trying to get Congress to swat flies with a Buick? I own a Buick. Uh, very few buy their entertainment on actual physical media anymore. And as the younger generations who are growing up with Netflix and iPods instead of Walkmans and video cassettes fall into the coveted disposable income sweet spot, jobs without debt, uh, the numbers are going to swing further away. Ten years ago, music industry was doomed because digital pirates uh, setting sales for the Packard Bell home computers, pillaging the industry main. I don't see any record label music artists, producers, or record executives living in cardboard boxes because of Napster. Uh, well, they ended up buying Napster, actually, didn't they? Uh, what I see is an industry that fixed its problem by giving people what they wanted. Simple, easy to obtain music, legally and uh, for the most part cheap, because when it's all said and done, Napster, LimeWire, or whatever harvester of virus laden MP3 files <laughs> anyone gambled was... Only a baby step above the Sears cassette recorder and the local FM station. Netflix was a shining example of progress until they got greedy and tried to split the pair of kings to double their take. Unfortunately, there's going to be internet privacy. <laughs> I see what he did yeah, there. Yeah, I like his emails. Uh, unfortunately, there's going to be internet piracy, but if you can't cure the common cold, you still you can still treat the symptoms to reduce the suffering. Sonic Screwdriver. P.S. Somebody needs to let Apple know that twenty dollars for a movie with no extras, menus, or documentary will, won't compete with the DVD with a DVD with all those included for the same price. You know that's what? That's true. They're taking those away from yeah, a lot of common DVDs. common DVDs. Do not get those extras now because no. they want everybody to buy Blu-ray. Well, we saw the same thing when they started shoveling uh, uh, extras on on DVDs off of the VHSs. Right. So, uh, it's, I mean, not that we got too many extras on VHSs, but you stop seeing like the special editions. No, what what they like started that. to do, and one of the first movies to do this, and I remember it was uh, the Matrix. Yeah. The Matrix had a lot of awesome extras on the DVD. They were the first ones that were like, there was like games, Follow the White Rabbit stuff. Right. Yeah. Uh, there was games on the DVD. There was always Easter eggs on DVDs, I remember. There still are. Uh, are there still like new ones these days? Yeah. Like, like it, It's it's a fun thing that's never going to go away. Yeah, yeah. Like I know uh, An Evening with Kevin Smith and An Evening with Kevin Smith 2, they have awesome uh Easter eggs. Mm -hmm. And normally uh, what they do is uh, they'll, they'll just like pop up a picture that has mm -hmm. to do with the movie or something like that. But on uh, if you don't know what an evening with Kevin Smith is, uh, Kevin Smith likes to talk. <laughs> Kevin Smith likes to talk a lot. And now he gets bookings to do such yes. things. And he doesn't charge that much to talk. And he covers it on one of the DVDs. But basically, An Evening with Kevin Smith is a, a Q&A where uh, he'll book a show. Uh, people will show up, stand in line, and ask mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> was it, it's although, although the third one he did, wasn't it all one question? Well, well, or was <laughs> yeah, it was. Because uh, back to the whole Kevin Smith likes to talk thing, mm -hmm. he... he will ramble mm. about the same story. And on the third, uh, Too Fat for 40, which was the name of the third. No, 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 that, no was the the yeah, that was the fourth. Yeah, that was the fourth. he's doing another one, by the way. I love him. I can't get enough he's of him. But uh, yeah, on Too Fat for 40, which is uh, his fourth one, he only answers one question. For the DVD, and it's an hour and a half long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he is long-winded. But, I mean, on those DVDs, back to the original point, uh, the Easter eggs were him answering additional questions. 
that they didn't have or didn't feel were necessary to go in the actual feature. So you found the Easter egg. You got to hear them talk more. And they always have fun with it. Like I'm, like I'm finding with um, I, I I picked up a couple of the ten year like the Clerks X and the Mo Rats ten year DVDs, and they they have a lot of fun with their DVD stuff there. Right. So, but um, but anyways, there was where were we before that? Piracy. Piracy. Sopa. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, we've been talking about this cord cutting and, and everything. I mean, it, it's it's. Uh, yeah, not, not a lot of people are buying DVDs, but then I walk into my dad's house and see his giant DVD collection because he doesn't have adequate internet. Uh, although he's loving his Netflix still. <laughs> he's just loving the hell out of his Netflix, and I expect him to be start cutting well, DirecTV any day now. Only Rob doesn't like Netflix. Well, he has the DVDs. <laughs> well, To be fair, he has the DVDs, which yeah. has a better selection. But uh, I was going to say something. <laughs> oh, uh, even, even recording artists have mm-hmm. been making fun or p- putting down this whole SOPA thing mm-hmm. or the whole mega upload thing, which we'll get to. Yeah. Like Jonathan Colton sent out, a, sent out a message on Twitter that said, Oh, mega uploads down. I'm suddenly rich now, <laughs> which obviously is a joke Yeah, because it's Jonathan Colton. But yeah, if they don't care, it's not hurting them any. Mm-hmm. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I, you know, like I said, a lot <laughs> of uh, we, uh, we 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 talked a lot last <laughs> week about the nerds going out in force last Wednesday, and, uh, and 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 you know getting the word out there so effectively that what thirty some uh, of the backers, including sponsors of the, of the bill, backed out of it that day. The guy who created the bill violated his own bill. <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah, that. that was fantastic. It, it's uh, Texans for what? I forget the guy's name, but he uh, his website Texans for his name dot com. Mm-hmm. The photographs on the website he did not pay for, nor did he have permission to use. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is a direct violation of the act that he was trying to get voted in. Mm-hmm. So, so even been- that guy doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> his his dot com would have gotten taken away from him, but that would have been tremendous. Uh, but thankfully, yeah, it got killed. It got it got it got taken off the table completely. Uh, now you know, is this a? Is, it, 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 the, the big the big story is how much of a force the internet was that day. I, apparently, uh, phone lines were 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 overloaded. Uh, e- emails like by the ton, uh, and and it was everywhere. Google had it. Uh, I know Twit had it. Went their stuff black and white. Wikipedia, uh, read white or Reddit. I'm sorry, uh, and, uh, and and people responded. So I wanted anybody could have designed the uh, the Google splash for that day. <laughs> exactly, it was just a giant piece of tape over. <laughs> I yeah, over the I could have done much. that in paint. But, but still, they they got so many people forwarded to their uh, petition that were they were getting uh, put together. Yeah, uh, Brian, did you see anything interesting or anything impress you about uh, last Wednesday's efforts? I think the efforts last Wednesday were just incredible, and I think a lot of people even, um, I guess, underestimated what was actually going to happen. I mean, every place that you went, you had the opportunity to uh, voice your opinion to your you know, representative in, in some way uh, to the point that I couldn't even send them an email. It wouldn't even load the page. It, w- it was just I bounce backs. So it was crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I think it, um, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, everyone kind of got together and, um, you know, voice their opinion, which is uh, actually very um Unfortunate that it, it's not done more often. I think this is something that the technology made easier to do, and you know everyone was behind it. it it's a, unfortunate that we can't get this kind of traction on other important issues. So, mm-hmm. well, this is the first big threat that we've had uh, to the internet's kind of way of being. You know, as yeah. con- content creators, like a lot of us are. And uh, what, Chachi, what are you doing? I'm fixing my sock. Okay, I use. <laughs> Doing. I was hoping you didn't switch to me while I was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, where were we? Uh, but no, I mean, and so this is the first time that that like kind of the power of the internet 
backlash on something like this. It's the know? first time the internet's been threatened, though. Right. Well, it's I been mean, threatened to the, in the to past. The, no, no. This is the first time the internet has been threatened to the point where it wasn't going to be the internet anymore. Exactly. Exactly. We've seen bills uh, similar to this, like the three strikes laws uh, that are coming through in uh, uh, France and some of the other countries. And, uh, you know, that, but that, that's that been those countries. That's how they, they deal with stuff. This was something that would have affected the Internet at large all around the world because it's centralized here. This is pretty, it was pretty much hackers on a global scale. Okay. Okay. No. Explain. No. I, wait, wait, wait. Why? Why? Well, people were threatening to take mm-hmm. away or blame us for things that were going wrong on the Internet. Okay. Okay. So they were after us. And we all united to give them a and giant middle. It was a few years later where the hackers are now the heads of billion <laughs> right. dollar companies yeah, like right. Google. So, um, I mean, they, you know, you got to say something, something like Google, you know, steps up for something like this. And they're probably like one of the most powerful forces as far as this goes. So I don't think I saw anything from Apple. I don't think I saw anything from Microsoft, you know. No, because they're going to make money no matter I don't, what. Yeah, they're not. They're not. You know, we'll adapt to the internet. You know, you you start to need a solution to get around the, what the law just screwed up on the internet. We'll uh, write software and sell it to you uh, to fix it. You know, <laughs> like you know, like virus software. Sonic Screwdriver says we're Americans. Don't mess with our gas prices or our porn. There you go. That sums it up right there. <laughs> so, uh, but on the heels of that, of course, there was the mega upload story. Um, the day after FBI agents in apparently conjunction with officials in New, New Zealand, uh, did a sting operation. They, they, they arrested, uh, forcefully, I understand, uh, members of the mega upload, uh, you know, the heads of, of the company, including the most interesting was when they stormed the compound. Uh, I presume it's a compound of, uh, <laughs> Kim.com. <laughs> Is his name uh, Kim dot com down in New Zealand? They actually had to pry him from his panic room. <laughs> oh man, that is <laughs> awesome! Now, I mean, they, everybody knows what Mega Upload is. It's it's you know you you it's like a you send it basically, right? For most people, you, you can upload your file and you have a link. You send it along. I, I have clients that use it legitimately. I I use it legitimately use on it a too. weekly basis. Yeah, exactly. And it went down this week. Yeah. Because they they got these guys. And apparently, supposedly they have emails and 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 whatnot that said these people were promoting the fact that you could use it for piracy. Uh, some emails were even to the extent where they said that uh, what we are is uh, shipping and handling for the pirates. You know, uh, so I guess they got caught red handed with the their intent with the service, and that's what shut a lot of it down. So uh, what's that? The chat room. It's the chat room. This live stream. It's just oh, live. that's just it's just the app. Don't worry about that. Okay. So um, got scared. So so got scared. So we have this. Uh, uh, you know, is you think this is a statement or uh, just a coincidence? Uh, right after the big SOPA push. Oh no, this is a statement. <laughs> you think this is a statement that says your your stupid bill and internet backlash doesn't mean anything. Yeah, the internet gave gave the government the finger on Wednesday. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So well, the wait, government. Wait, let's backtrack this because the FBI is an executive branch right. organization. The executive branch just came out against SOPA, like within the days before this uh, backlash, and uh, and and then did this. <laughs> the government we gave the government the finger on Wednesday. Yes. So on Thursday they packed up all their guns, went around the world, <laughs> yeah, went around the world, and knocked and on somebody's door. Gave us the finger right back. <laughs> <laughs> what do you? What's your take on this, Brian? I think that you know one of the things is that although they you know. I'm sure they tried to prove a point. The point they proved was the SOPA and PIPA and all that stuff honestly wasn't really needed. Um, You know, I guess all day you could kind of debate, you know, I don't know, mega upload. And obviously there are a lot of people that use it legitimately uh, as well as I'm sure there are some that uh, don't use it legitimately. But, you know, that said, rather than canceling, you know, you know, rather than taking a broad swipe at a whole bunch of things and breaking DNS and, you know, the whole deal, they went after the one, you know, the one organization they were after. So, you know, I, I think, like I said, it, it just, I, I don't see the need. I mean, they proved the point. They proved the point that we don't really need some of these other, you know, more intrusive laws and, you know, keep the infrastructure of the Internet, you know, 
the way that it is. And if somebody is legitimately, you know, pirating stuff, then go after those people, not not everyone. Uh, don't go into a data center and shut it down and shut everybody down. And, you know, I think that, like I said, I think, unfortunately, that's what they proved. Um, you know, after the internet ro- rose up, they proved that, yeah, we don't really need that. We can kind of take down people that are pirating stuff, um, allegedly. So Sonic in the in the chat is saying, so if the government can't cancel your domain name, they'll just kick down your door. Uh, I guess also- so. Well, 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 the SOPA was supposed to be to cancel out co- domain names from foreign pirates. Right. right. You know, so, I mean, that it was a little more specific to that. Uh, but still, it, the whole point wa- was that it was, you know, like you were saying, uh, you know, they would cut out the dot com without really due process. Right. And this is something if they have whatever happened with Mega Upload, they've been working on it for a while. They didn't just decide to go do it that day. But maybe they did or they didn't. No, but they, I mean, it's, it's for, especially around the world, New Zealand like that. Uh, but somebody was working on that. They have they, there was a email correspondence they said they had from back in like 2009, I think. So uh, this has been a long-standing thing, you know. And it has to be something truly incriminating for them to, you know, do this. <laughs> Although I wonder if just a couple of emails that say, ha ha, look at all the pirating going on, is really enough to kick down somebody's door in a foreign country. Well, um, first off, Sonic Screwdriver said, "Finger." we gave them the finger on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. They put a foot in someone's behind on Thursday, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which was pretty much better than what I said. And also, um, not only that... But it, there's a war going on right now mm-hmm. that's not being fought with guns. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. All right, so the whole SOPA so thing is this, happened. So is this our first nonviolent revolution? It, it's getting to be that point. Because mm-hmm. I mean, uh, with groups that are out there, uh, it's Wednesday everyone rose up against this whole SOPA thing. Got taken away. Thursday, the government went and kicked down Mega Upload's door and took everything they had. Mm -hmm. So Anonymous just started firing back. Yeah, and and Anonymous, whatever you think, whatever they think of them, think think they are, but they are they're a force at this point. They are. They took down websites that they're supposedly representing some kind of standard of what they think the internet is. You know, whatever they are, like they're almost their entire their their own sovereign nation at this point. And at this point, I'm with them. Mm -hmm. Screw it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to plant your flag somewhere. Mm -hmm. This is turning into hackers. I told you. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's a nonviolent war Mm -hmm. because I mean they took. They they retaliated. They took down sites on Thursday or what Friday. What did they take down? What, what, I know what they, they took. Hit? I know for sure they took down the Department of Justice website. Okay. I, and there's a list of other ones that they hit. And I don't know those for sure. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, Anonymous wasn't happy about Mega Upload being seized like it was. No. I, I'm with them. Oh, they took well, it. They also took down FBI.gov. That makes sense. Since that nice. was uh, the right. And, and I don't know much about. Uh, I, I don't know much about uh, the jurisdictions, but uh, but but Sonic uh, says if hold on, uh, wouldn't the CIA have jurisdiction over the FBI on foreign so- soil? I guess it's a FBI. Uh, you know they collab- co- you know corroborated with New Zealand government. So anonymous was busy. I don't know. There's so many. There's so many branches these days. They I were don't know busy. How they work. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting as more information comes out, um, because I was reading some things today, and I don't want to get into the whole conspiracy thing, but, um, you know, I I think Mega Upload had a lot of things kind of in the hopper to legitimize, you know, what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, they had some plans for, I think it was called uh, Mega Box or something like that, and uh, they're going to, you know, really promote the DIY uh, record label. And I think, you know, what I don't want to see is that, you know, say you have like a, okay, this wasn't a small startup, obviously, but, uh, you know, you have somebody who, you know, starts up something that, you know, threatens, you know, whether it's the movies or this, you know, recording industry. And next thing that they do is say, you know what, I think that guy's pirating something. So go shut them down. Um, you know, I obviously they couldn't do that to Apple when Apple, you know, launched iTunes. And, you know, all of that. But, um, you know, I, I think it's I think it's of a concern, if you know, as the information comes out, 
um, you you know, if they start using us as a, you know, almost like a terroristic threat to, you know, to keep their businesses in check, I just, that's not going to be good for anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and also it was, it was revealed that Swiss Beats, a big producer, mm-hmm. I guess, in New York, uh, is CEO of Mega Upload. I, I don't think they arrested him uh, necessarily, uh, but that kind of that kind of made sense. Uh, you know how they got all those artists involved in that commercial that got them in trouble with Universal uh, yeah. a co- uh, about a month ago or a few weeks ago, or was it? No, that was, uh, that was uh, December, wasn't it? Um, but it's getting it's getting kind of crazy with that. I, I don't know. It's a uh, I don't know. Big things are happening. Yeah, I think that I think that's you know a prime example of what Sopa and Pipple would have actually turned out to be. Um, you know, and it's hard to explain to people. You know, I explained to you know, some non not as tech savvy people, tech savvy tech savvy people, and I'm like, you know, say you had a really great idea and you were you know trying to get that idea off the ground, and you know, all somebody would have to do is threaten. You know, it, it would take somebody with you know millions of dollars poured, poured into lawyers and. They could say, eh, I think this person's infringing. Boom, gone. Yeah. And yeah. there's nothing you could do about it. Yeah. It, it just it just loosens that, that all up. And, and that's the thing. This is a bill that was obviously, uh, uh, you know, w- w- slanted towards the MPAA, RIAA, and what was good for that. You know, yep. again, it doesn't help the Jonathan Coltons out there that are doing it themselves or the MC Front a lots or, or me and my band. You know, I mean, it just it, it, there was, you know, what could they really do as much with this bill as uh, Universal Music Group could do? I, you know, I don't think so. You know, it, it, it would be even worse than what we saw uh, last month with uh, with Tech News Today when they got pulled off of YouTube. It would be like that everywhere with again, without due process, because there was there was a lot that, you know, that process didn't didn't work for it isn't it also weird that this has really put the dmca in a different light because i think people are like well at least the dmca it wasn't this bad the digital uh, millennium copyright act that's been kind of plaguing the internet uh for the last uh, 12 years um i mean that's where we get our ideas of fair use and takedown notices and i think safe harbor is a part of that if i'm not mistaken and uh and that's that's you know that was the scary thing that that sopa was going to take away so, and we see what's happening to Mega Upload now. So, well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll see where all that goes. I'm sure. I'm sure it's not done yet. Um, and also, we have to look for, look out for uh, people. Uh, you know, the next version of this, the next SOPA. You know, the next one that will try to sneak out underneath. Uh, you know, uh, underneath our notice, noses. Because a lot of that happens. A lot of stuff gets sneaked through uh, in our government like that. So. Um, it was uh, like uh, Sonic in the chat room said. <laughs> reading Anonymous's Twitter feed mm-hmm. while they were working, yeah, was like reading war headlines. Yeah, he's going. He's going to World of the Worlds in there, wasn't he? Yeah, because I mean, they seriously every time they took a website down, they said it on Twitter. Uh, I'm bringing up the list now because I'm curious to see how many it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Within the first hour, they took down uh, Universal and Department of Justice. And I see CBS, MPAA, according to Sonic. So uh, there was a quote in here, Brian. I think you put this in here. Yes, from Mr. Dodd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that actually, <laughs> I, I don't understand how somebody can uh, be in the position that they are. So uh, I believe it's Chris Dodd. He. Uh, he was, and I'm going to get this wrong. He was a politician. I forget exactly what it was, senator or representative. This or something is the guy to, with the whole lobbying extent. question, right? Like he's not, he's not currently a senator in the government, but he's in that time frame where he's not allowed to lobby for anything or donate to anything. Correct. So he's actually now the president, I believe, of the MPAA. Hmm. And I think the, you know, obviously, you know, some of the things that he said. Uh, we're very true. You know, I think he mentioned at one point in time, you know, the, the response to, you know, these, you know, two particular laws was unprecedented. And like he said, all the, the natural political things. Um, then he went on to Fox, Fox News, I believe. And essentially, uh, I guess he kind of went on a rant. And in a nutshell, this is, you know, really what he said. Those who count on, quote, Hollywood for support need to understand that this industry is watching very carefully who's going to stand up 
for them when their job is at stake. Don't ask me to write a check for you when you think your job is at risk. And then don't pay any attention to me when my job is at stake. So essentially, <laughs> you know what, you guys? You <laughs> that, don't support my bills. I'm not going to cut you any checks. Speaking of middle fingers. <laughs> so I don't know if he just thought no one watches Fox News. Um, <laughs> my father has it turned on all the time. Uh, yeah, mine too. So, you know, which is actually kind of funny because, you know, he comes out and, you know, says, look, you know, I – you know, I pay you money, you pass my bills, which obviously, to some extent, uh, that is how the government works nowadays. Mm -hmm. However, to, to actually go out there and actually say it, it's just, that was unprecedented. Mm -hmm. So now, there's actually a petition, um, uh, I think it's the president's website, and essentially it's a We the People, and they started up a petition, and they're asking that... Um, the White House investigate Mr. Dodd for bribery, for trying to bribe congressmen to pass his bill. Um, it requires, I believe, 25,000 votes or 25,000 signatures. Um, and then the president and or somebody in his staff has to respond to the petition. Wow. So I think it got like 25,000 signatures in a matter of days. Well, I'll try bringing it up, but I got an advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 27,500. Hold on. Yeah, here it is. White, the White House, President Barack Obama. Now, is this put up by the White House? Yeah, ah. this is WhiteHouse.gov. I, I saw this earlier on, on another yeah. podcast. But yeah, WhiteHouse.gov, and it's under p their peti petitions uh, uh, segment of the, of, of the uh, website. And it is investigate Chris Darney, MPA, for bribery after he pol politically admitted. Yeah, 28,421 is where it sits now. Uh, uh, damn, I got to create an account for this. <laughs> well, we'll yeah. get on a to do list. But yeah, uh, just just look up. Uh, well, I, I, yeah, if you look up We the People and, uh, and Dodd, uh, it should come up to you in, 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 uh, pretty quickly. So, um, wow, they, they, this is like for them all kinds of. See exempt gliders, balloons, electric aircraft, and ultralights from proposed one hundred dollar per flight aircraft user fee. Uh, okay, um, but yeah, it, it's uh, all kinds of crazy stuff coming out of this. So yeah, I think the fallout is going to be what you know. Obviously, is interesting as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that that's really going to you know stuff like this. I mean, obviously, this, this you know Mr. Dodd was clearly upset about. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, his bills, you know, I don't know how much money he's, you know, given to the government. Uh, but however, he obviously was upset about that and he didn't get what he paid for. So, um, just to do it on TV like that, it just, yeah, I can't, I just couldn't believe it. Well, in other news, Apple had a big announcement last week. Uh, and I guess they had an earnings call today as well, as I'm seeing here. Uh, well, this is the thing that got me kind of excited. They had their educational uh, uh, thing last Thursday, and uh, they announced uh, they're they're pushing textbooks basically on the iPad. So they they want you know all the colleges and everybody to have iPads, and they they they're relaunching their iTunes U, I think as its own app. Uh, but the, the the part that intrigued me was the iBooks author, uh, which you know you get you know you can author anybody. It's free on the Mac App Store. You download it, and uh, you can put your book up in the iBook Store. Um, really interesting. I, I'm currently involved in a publication that's looking for a digital solution. Uh, so I thought maybe this was it until there was a little bit about the DRM and your, uh, what you can do with it. Uh, apparently if you use the, uh, the iBooks author, uh, app, uh, you can only make money on it from the iBooks store. So don't be selling it straight on your website or anything. Cause apparently it just, outputs a file that you can put on your website and and you can put out for free and have people download uh but uh but you know but it, it's very restricted to that I, what is this going to do for textbooks you know these publishers aren't going to want to uh dedicate to just one platform like that so uh have you been watching any of this here brian i have um you know there was quite a discussion on uh twit actually this week about it mm -hmm. um it's, it's especially from the author you know standpoint anytime there's anytime there's lock-in or anything to that effect i you know obviously i think that's you know obviously very challenging for an author um but however i think that um 
in, in this particular case, as far as textbook goes, you know what? I that's one industry that go ahead and screw them as far as I care. <laughs> I spent uh, you know four hundred dollars a semester on engineering textbooks, and mm-hmm. that was a long time ago. So I can't only imagine what they cost now. Um, so yeah, I mean, it just, it, it sucked. I mean, you just, you'd have to buy a book. It was like a hundred bucks or something. And then, mm-hmm. you know, you go to sell it back at that time. And my book that was worth a hundred dollars three and a half months ago is now worth like 25 or 20 or something. So, um, you know, it, unfortunately I don't have much sympathy for those particular, or that particular industry. Um, as far as Apple getting into it, like I said, I, it's not so much that I care that, you know, one, one, um, one company is getting into it. Um, it it kind of stinks that uh, you 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 know you're kind of stuck with them and their environment. Mm-hmm. I think that you know if you look at something such as Microsoft Word, if I could only publish stuff that you know on Microsoft's website that I use Microsoft Word for, well that would stink. And you know obviously they wouldn't see the type of adoption that they you know that they currently have. So. But the tool's pretty nice, it sounds like. I was watching some of uh, Alex Lindsay's demo stuff of what he worked with, and uh, it, it, you can do some really cool stuff with it. Um, what this can do for manuals is interesting. If you're if you're dedicated to the I2, I, I, iPhone, iPad platform, of course. Uh, you know, me, I think I want a little more broader appeal. So I'm actually, look, this actually kind of spurred me to start signing up for some uh, Kindle authoring programs, uh, you know, through through Amazon Kindle. Uh, about, but, but I'm, I'm specific, specifically looking for a magazine publishing tool. So I don't know if this exactly fits what I'm looking at, but it's definitely got some, some, you know, I'm definitely going to keep an eye on it and see where it goes from here. Uh, but Hey, it's another push and they gotta do, they gotta do something to, to get ahead of Kindle here. Cause, uh, uh Kindle's gotta be eating their lunch by now, Ooh. you know, on, on stuff in general. Cause Ooh, it's everywhere, you know, lunch. I mean, <laughs> Hey, well, seriously, why would you put anything on anything other than Kindle right now? Because you have the devices which have sold how many, especially even the Fire in the last like few months. And uh, and it's I, I tell people when they ask me, it's like this is what the device you want to use if you want it everywhere because it's going to be on every computer platform. It's going to be on every uh, tablet out there because everything's got a Kindle reader. So I don't know, uh, but it, but it, it's really got me excited if if this works. And we start seeing more iPads out there and we start killing that industry that's like breaking your back as you carry them around uh, the campuses. It, it, it's really exciting. You know, it, it, it's really it's really interesting. And, and, and I hope it takes off, you know. Um, so but we'll see. We'll see how the, how the publishers react to this. So in other news, uh, Rim finally has a CEO change. What? They uh, they decided to go from the two CEO model, which that was working oh so well, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. down to the single uh, CEO. So, so essentially, in a nutshell, during the one of the football games, I think it was this week, uh, <laughs> I guess they made this announcement that these dudes that were in charge of Ram are no longer in charge. <laughs> um, I don't even know that there's much here to talk about other than uh, probably it's too little, too late, and I think that unless they come up with some some sort of savior, uh, you know, I, I just, I really don't see, you know, rim in it for the long haul. And I, I love Blackberry. I, I love the <laughs> device. I just, um, I, I don't even know what to say. Uh, recently friend of the show, AJ actually, uh, persuaded me to actually just get an iPhone. So I actually just got an iPhone. Excellent. How, how are you, uh, uh, converting to that so far? Uh, you know, it's a little bit challenging, uh, going from the, you know, corporate BlackBerry that just, it works so well for everything that I needed it to do as a technology professional. Um, you know, especially, you know, if you had an enterprise server in your environment and just the way everything, it was always in sync. It was, it always worked, you know, at least in my particular circumstance. Um, I actually went from a BlackBerry to a droid. Um, I went from that to a, galaxy something nexus or i forget what it was but um and then i went from there to uh to the iphone i like the iphone um you know the reason in addition to aj kind of pushing me that way uh you know i needed something that worked i mean that i just you know i just don't have time to be uh really you know messing around trying to get something to work and i although i'm sure that there are great uh android phones out there 
uh, you know, I just, I wanted something that, you know, worked for me really well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, let, let us know how, they, how you adapt to that over there. Um, but, uh, I, I don't know. It, it, the interesting part, I, I don't think you mentioned there was, a. Uh, would, would every time they, they supposed there was going to be a change in the CEO, you would see the stock rise. But now that they finally made a change in the CEO, it dropped the worst it's ever has. <laughs> or something to that effect. Have you heard this? Yeah, I, it's <laughs> like I said, it's it, I'll be honest. I'm I don't know what they can do. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I really don't. I think that, um, you know, I, I see a lot of companies, you know, my former company included, that's, you know, starting to allow you know, more and different phones, you know, into the environment, it's a cool. lot of, um, it's a trend now. you know, bring, bring your own, bring your own phone, yeah. you know, and it, it yeah. seems to really work well. So I, I, it's, it's one of those companies that had the lock in. I don't, you know, that's not true anymore. Um, I desperately miss, uh, BBM. I, I love BBM, but obviously there's, you know, other ways to communicate with, you know, coworkers and friends. So hey, we can I message uh, now. Yep, exactly. <laughs> And uh, aside from that, again, uh, you know, speaking of Apple, was uh, you put this in here? Apple is worth more than all the tea in China. I saw this article and it was actually kind of funny. I was like, "Oh, well, let me see what Apple's worth more." And uh, four thousand trips to the moon, which uh, they had some price per trip or whatever. Um, all the tea in China. So I guess all the tea that uh, China produces, they Apple is actually worth more. Um, half of New York City's market value, which actually was kind of funny. Um, and the combined endowments of the wealthiest U.S. universities. So wow. there were a couple of other ones that are on there as well. They had listed there, but I thought those were, from my example, were kind of the funnier ones. Awesome. Awesome. Well, they had, uh, oh, uh, nearly the combined worth of the 10 wealthiest people on Earth. Huh. Um. So they're still kicking butt. Uh, as they said, they sold 37 million iPhones this quarter. Uh, lots, billions of money, lots of great shares, percentages. Oh, my God. So nothing, I, 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 you know, this is usually the point where we get Steve Jobs on the phone and he says something crazy. And that, that's something that this is where I'm starting to miss him. It's so I've, someone posted it on Twitter earlier, hmm. but um. Apple made more than Google is worth. Yeah, that's yeah. completely astonishing. Yeah, they made thirteen gazillion dollars and actually selling things. Yes, not digital <laughs> things. Yes, I mean they have a digital arm, but let's say that's not that's not where they're making most of their money. They yep. they 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 often say the iTunes Store is to sell iPods or iPhones now or iPads now. You know, the software was always, that's why you get $30 for an upgrade to like Lion or Snow Leopard these days, because the software doesn't matter anymore. It's the hardware that you're running. Right. You know, it's that you, bought, an, it's that you bought another MacBook, you know, it's uh, it, it's incredible. Um, so, so you know, uh, things are not dead in, 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 the, in, the, in that in that vein. So. All right. Uh, well, is there anything else uh, we need to cover here before we head out of here? Wow, this is going to be a short show. I don't. I, it, it's it's all just kind of a, a, a rollover from last week. Yeah, it's uh, episode eighty-five, part two. <laughs> 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 episode. Well, that's better than eighty-six for you. Then you don't have to, you know, yeah. kill it. Exactly. Exactly. Episode eighty-five, part two. Electric Boogaloo. Exactly. So, um, what? Well, I guess on that note, we'll head out here. Uh, Brian, hey, what's going on with you? Of H- course, you're uh, anything anything you can talk about or plug or anything. Rob's going to be extremely upset that the episode's this short. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> I know it now. I just know it. No, uh, uh, like I said, uh, just kind of you know in between things right now. So hopefully, uh, actually starting uh, tomorrow. Um, start a new opportunity which will actually be really good so looking forward to that but no other than that just looking forward to uh actually i got to figure out a game to play uh, mr chachi in for chachi plays that's actually uh number one on my priority list oh, there you go. are you working downtown yet uh no uh, you suck <laughs> although i i may be visiting from time to time all right all right just making sure 
Ooh. And Chachi, you're giving uh, ChachiPlays.com, of Chachi course. ChachiPlays.com, Chachi which we're up to $2,100, by the way. Wait, since the beginning? Yeah. Of the show? Yeah. Wow. Nice. Keep they're, them not, coming. they're not connected. Keep them coming. <laughs> a lot of great stuff there. And uh, I'm over at, of course. No, you're not. What? You're over at ChachiPlays.com, oh. where we're raising money for kids. There it is. There it is. Ignore all my other projects going on right now <laughs> over at SorgatronMedia.com. <laughs> All of your projects are at ChachiPlays.com <laughs> under the donate button. You cannot see what he is doing nope. unless you go to ChachiPlays.com and hit that donate button. Exactly. Uh, it is recommended oh. from the chat room that uh, that you guys could play Night Trap on Sega CD. Uh, well, judging by the fact that I have three Sega CDs over there in the back and none of them work. I was going to say, I don't think we're taking Sega CD. No, I yeah, wasn't going to. I don't think there was a no. single request last year for Sega CD. We never, yeah, we had a Dreamcast, and yeah. I think we did a little bit of that. No. No? Huh. No Dreamcast. Uh, the Dreamcast came out on a 9 9 1999. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, we're 86 in the uh, Dreamcast. <laughs> oh. So, well, it, well, after last year, we learned what to take and what not to take. Yeah, because we kind of took everything. Yeah, because yeah, after 24 hours, the last thing we want to do is move everything. Yeah, exactly. So, so, <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll 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 get it down. Oh, and uh, uh, the Monster Haikus. Oh, what's the website for that? We want to plug those guys. Isn't it MonsterHaikus.com? Really? They got that? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just guessing. Hold on, we'll get that real quick. Monster-Haiku.com. Uh, we will be talking with uh, our friends, uh, uh, the, the Sagers and uh, and DJ Lunchbox about their new print project. No, this is a different monster haiku entirely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on, it's on my Facebook. Uh, so uh, uh, keep an eye out for Facebook. that uh, the uh, week of the seventh. Uh, I just got invited to their launch party apparently. So uh, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, I can't get the site for that. Well. Uh, but it launches. It launches uh, February. I think February first. So yes. you got a couple weeks. It's we'll an get, awesome. We'll get some more information for you. It's an awesome project. Uh-huh. Haikus, little monsters. It's great. Yes. So uh, until next time, hey guys, uh, hit us up awesomecast.com. A contact at awesomecast.com if you want to email us. Or you can call us. Whoa, or at seven two four two five two, a cast. That's seven two four two five two 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 seven eight. Oh, the Monster Haikus are located at ChachiPlays.com. Yes, ChachiPlays.com. <laughs> Everything is at ChachiPlays.com. You cannot get to anything on the internet unless you go to ChachiPlays. You have Plays. your own SOPA. Yes. You cannot <laughs> everything, get to, you Everything can, just redirects to you. You cannot get to anything on the internet unless you go to ChachiPlays.com and donate some money. Sorry. There you go. So from Chachi, thanks, Brian, for joining us. Uh, thanks for our awesome chat room tonight. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Whee!